there are certain elements of this gospel that bring me back to the past. One is being in Capernaum a few years ago. Uh, Capernaum is where the house of Peter was. And right now, over the ruins of the house is a huge church in the shape of a boat. And that church is the church of St. Peter. And right across, maybe from here to across the street, there is a, the ruins of a temple, the synagogue, which is what Peter's talking about. So he lived within the vicinity of the synagogue. So hearing these gospels about the Holy Land just bring me back and it gets us to appreciate the history that we have as people. Not all of us have been to the Holy Land, I, I grant that, but to know that our faith is historical and rooted in history, not just made up on a whim, not just the, the concoction of a particular author or two, but history. Now, part of that history is what we hear today that's really extraordinary history in the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel. And he has a vision. He has a vision of what eventually he realizes is the Holy One of God. And this vision is in various phases. It's filled with symbols and, and beasts and, and, and uh, sapphire and jewels and, and so on. And what he is doing when he has this vision, he's receiving his commission to go preach. And then he starts the writing of, of the vision which we heard. My question today is, where do we find God? Peter found God in this story today in Jesus. And Jesus' command, just go get the temple tax from the, the fish's mouth, which sounds so simple, but you realize that had to be a miracle. And he's confronting Jesus as his rabbi. So here's God appearing to to Simon and those around him as his rabbi, his teacher. Ezekiel, on the other hand, experienced God in glory. I mean, glory, the throne was so bright he couldn't look at it. It looked like a jewel. God is the question. God is the answer. And the question I propose today is, where do we find God in our lives? With the number of people here today, I can imagine every one of us should have our own answer to that. Yes, the common answer is the Eucharist, of course. The common answer is the Trinity, of course. But when we're not in the physical church, where do we find God? There are people in healthcare. You find, and I'm asking a rhetorical question, do you find God when you're helping others, <coughs> when you're seeing to medication for others? Do you find, and the rest of us, do you find God here in church when you come in before Mass and, and join in the prayers? Do you find God when you go to Trader Joe's or the other supermarkets in the area? See, God is always available to us. I mean, if, if Peter, Simon Peter that is, could find the presence of God in the mouth of a fish, he found a coin, but it was at the mandate of Jesus. Where do we find God? Do we find him in our households? Do we find him when we're going about our breakfast, when we're waking up, going to sleep at night? God is available to us all the time. And Jesus makes that invitation so wide open by asking us to care for one another and to the degree that we care for one another, we're caring for him. No other god or goddess can do this. Of course, there are no other gods and goddesses. But even in the ancient history, no one ever said, oh, oh, you'll find God in loving people. You'll find God, you'll experience God when you serve the poor or help those who are ill or take care of your neighbor. No, Jesus is unique for that. Of course, the Torah, the Old Testament, mandated that it was up to the Israelites, the Jews now, to 
find God in the ceremonies of the temple, to find God in taking care of the widow and the orphan, yes. But Jesus makes that so much broader when he comes on the scene and, and tells us, giving a cup of water in my name, you're giving it to me. Forgiving someone, you're forgiving me. Visiting someone, you're visiting me. That's extraordinary. And what an advantage we have when we look around our world and when you leave church now and go home or go to shop or go back to work, wherever you go, God is there with you. God, excuse me, God is there with us. It's not exclusive to me, it's not exclusive to you. God is available to us wherever we are. And we're as close to God as our minds are because we can raise our minds and voices to God and praise him and speak to him wherever we are, and he is with us. That's the remarkable thing about Jesus. It's Matthew's gospel that we hear today, but it was Matthew's gospel that gave us that phrase to remind us of where God is. Emmanuel, he's the one who recorded it. You'll give the kid the name Emmanuel, the name which means God is with us. So today, you won't find a coin necessarily in the mouth of a fish, but you will find God in your own hearts and in the hearts of one another. Mm -hmm.